Hi, Singapore. How are you doing? So I'm returning to Singapore after nine years, and I used to work here. So it's incredibly exciting to come back and talk about reimagining capital markets because um, I've worked in capital markets before. That's my former career, and two thirds of it was actually in Singapore. So a lot of what has shaped my thinking around capital markets has been thanks to my time here. So I'm really excited to be back. Um, so um, just by way of introduction, I run uh, growth and partnerships for MetaMask Institutional. This is a different product line within the family of MetaMask wallets, uh, and it is geared towards uh, connecting all organizations on the planet to Web3. So I'm going to borrow Adam Smith's quote. I think he, known as the father of modern economics, probably described capital markets as the free flow of money and the exchange of goods between individuals and organizations. And this essentially helps entrepreneurs bring their ideas to life. It helps um, small businesses become large corporations, and it helps folks like you and me to become yeah. investors and to be able to invest in our futures. But as you might know, today, capital markets is anything but this. It is slow and expensive. Um, there has been decades of innovation that has been done within legacy traditional finance that has not been built to work together. And so you have intermediaries and you have several steps in the trade life cycle that makes it expensive and slow. Furthermore, this is now concentrated among a few players such as the gentlemen who are sitting here before us, there's maybe 20 global institutions that are the main purveyors of risk today and capital. And so one would think that when you have large concentration of players, that you would have economies of scale, but that's not true at all. Over the last decade, you've seen these large investment banks uh, voluntarily reduce their client base. And so capital markets is not available to the long tail of organizations today. And so this has now resulted in an inequitable world economic order. And don't take my word for it. If you look at the statistics in uh, BLS, BIS, sorry, the global liquidity indicators show that while you have a large demand from developing countries for foreign uh, capital, uh, only a small fraction of that is fulfilled by cross-border claims. And furthermore, any guesses for guessing who is the largest borrower of US dollars today? Any guesses? It's the US government. And so, Capital markets is extremely efficient for the largest participants, but does not translate into the rest of the world. And so let me paint a picture of how we think about reimagining capital markets at MetaMask Institutional. So now we have a technology that is composable and open source. We're able to be completely permissionless so anyone can participate. And furthermore, you have digital bearer properties that can create digital scarcity. And so by combining these properties, what you find is you are finding a global capital markets system. Any borrower, any lender can participate at the global scale. And furthermore, some of the things that we are doing close work with with many of our partners is thinking about a concept of universally acknowledged credentials that can prove my investor suitability to invest in an asset or to prove my um, credit worthiness as a borrower. And this creates then an instant capital markets framework to be able to 
access markets with. And furthermore, as if, if you've been paying close attention to what's happening in DeFi, you are seeing a pace of innovation that no single entity or a collective of companies can match. And so we've seen 17,000 dApps be developed using this open source composable technology. Now, let's talk about C5 for a second. I have many of my friends from my former life who are attracted to the promise of C5. They find their skill sets and their relationships quite easily transferable to C5. I tell them to resist the urge <laughs> because what we see happen in C5 is that you are seeing the same structures emerge. You've got the same lengthy onboarding process that is not transferable. And you have the same liquidities of, of um, sorry, same centers of liquidity be created within different centers globally. Now, what we have, sorry, I'll go back. What we do see different in CFI is that you are seeing the same counterparty risks now being associated with newer entities that haven't been battle tested and are sometimes not as regulated as might seem. But they'll still say, well, that's what it takes to get institutions into DeFi. It has to sound and look like what institutions are used to. I'm sure absolutely that if your day job is to find arbitrage opportunities between two centralized exchanges, or if you are very good at being able to put on a basis trade between CFI exchanges and DeFi, all the power to you. That's great. We love you as a, as a customer segment. You, you are battle testing this infrastructure as we build. Um, you have been our earliest adopters, and you represent an important segment within this ecosystem. But I struggle to find that by having speculative capital enter DeFi or CFI, that you are going to be able to convince institutions that have no mandate whatsoever to put on delta neutral strategies suddenly understand the promise of Web3. And any organization that wants to get involved is doing a great disservice to themselves by not actually climbing the steep learning curve that it takes to understand their place within this ecosystem. And I also tell service providers that are building for DeFi that it's not the same institutions showing up. It's not the same institutions from traditional finance. It's not even the same institutions in CFI that are showing up on MetaMask Institutional. So you have to think about new uh, business models to provide what organizations require when they are participating in Web3. And so every layer of financial systems are being innovated on right now on Web3. Beyond capital markets, when you realize that this technology is combining identity, content, and things of value to interact with the same settlement layer, th things start looking a lot more multidimensional. We have corporations on MetaMask Institutional that realize that the way that they evolve with their audiences is using Web3 tokens. The way that they engage with their fans and, and frankly keep a record of is through Web3 tokens and they use this on MMI. Now, if I made any prediction today about what the use case would be in terms of Web3, this would not age well. So I'm not going to say anything. What I can say is that MetaMask Institutional is here to empower organizations to discover and derive full utility in Web3. And how do we do this? Okay. So here in this video, we show how you are able to access and track your Web3 portfolio.
but we combine that with a connection to your custodial wallet. So you can see that you can interact with your custodial wallet address within the familiar browser extension of MetaMask. And so we think deeply about how we can provide unrivaled access in a compliant way with the necessary controls. In this video, we show how you can go connect your browser extension wallet to any DAP, initiate a transaction, but then when you sign, you're not actually settling the trade. Instead, you settle the trade at the custodial layer. And so, at the end of the day, we provide you all of Web3 across multiple chains, across multiple custodians, and we give you a dashboard to be able to track your portfolio and analyze your transactions. I'm very proud of what the MetaMask institutional team has accomplished so far, but we would not have gotten there without our partners. A huge shout out to Credo, Cactus Custody, and BitGo. They were our initial partners when launched last year. We are also ramping up with our newer custodians, Hextrust, Parfine, Gnosis Safe, as well as GK8. And along with that, we're going to continue to expand that base. So I'm really happy to be able to announce four new custodians on MetaMask Institutional. We are partnering with Kobo, with Floating Point Group, based in the US, Propine, which is a fully licensed, MAS licensed custodian based in Singapore, as well as Liminal, built on a multi-custodial multi stack of HSM and MPC for exchanges and um, uh, fintech providers. So right now we have 11 custodians on our platform, five of which are based in Asia because that's what our customers are asking us for. Not only that, in combination, we now provide access to Web3 for over 1,800 organizations globally. And so we continue to believe that depending upon what your use case is as an organization, we will have a custodial stack that provides the governance and the operational controls that match your specific use case. How to find us? You can go to our landing page, metamask.io. Under institutions, we have all the information over there. You can also reach out um, to us at the booth. Um, you can also come say hi. You can also email me directly. I'm at MMI underscore sales at consensus.net. Thank you all for your time.